Well, good Saturday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Saturday, and we have some more news on the Michael Irving case, okay? Um, we've been following along this whole thing um, from the beginning of Michael Irving being let go from the NFL Network and ESPN through the $100 million lawsuit and the turns in and things that have happened with this case. Um, what I will always say, and I've said this many, many times, there's always three sides to every argument, and that is your side and my side, and somewhere in the middle lies the truth. And whenever we are discussing an issue, we're never going to put ourselves in bad light. We're only going to tell you know our side of the story that makes us look good. That's that's a fact. And somewhere in the middle of all this stuff, there's wrongdoing here, there, everywhere. There is the truth in here. And it's up to an impartial person to make the case. With this case, we've basically had Michael Irvin's complete side of the story of everything that's gone on. And as far as the court system goes, the only win that has happened for Marriott has been moving the case from and you could debate if that's a win, from a Texas court to a federal court. But along the way, Marriott has been the one that's been looking like they're dragging their feet, that they're stalling, and having loss after loss after loss against the courts. The latest one, of course, last night, where there was an emergency injunction filed because Michael Irvin's people said they didn't really give us the tape. They let me see the tape. We couldn't record the tape, couldn't touch the tape, couldn't do anything with the tape. And so the judge, of course, went back to Marriott and deemed that tape has to be turned over by 5 o'clock. I'm not used to people not following my court orders and so on, and blasted Marriott. Marriott filed a 26-page um, 26 page piece to the court system, finally saying what the alleged incident was. Now, I'm going to go to WFAA, the fan, and play that now the thing that's crazy is news has evolved more into opinion pieces more than facts anything and then more than anything else um everything is driven by trying to get a response and it's interesting the way you get it from different sources okay so i want to actually go through after i show this clip and read exactly the way it's brought to you from two different sources, okay? It is the latest in an ongoing fight between Cowboys legend Michael Irvin and Marriott Hotels. In court filings, Irvin is accused of making, quote, unwelcome sexual advances to an employee in the lobby of an Arizona hotel back in February. The hotel alleges Irvin was visibly intoxicated and repeatedly attempted to touch the employee without her consent. And obviously he's very, very eager to clear his name and clear up these allegations. On Wednesday, he and his attorneys launched a full-scale attack on the hotel for not releasing video of the one-minute-and-a-half interaction. Attorney Eric Cedillo is not connected to the case, but says any audio could be vital in a defamation case. Some of the allegations of the touching, uh, the relationship, who came up to who first, incredibly important to kind of glean that from the video. Marriott Hotels filed a protective order to keep the video from being released to protect the identity of their employee. The judge denied it and ordered it to be released to Irvin and his attorneys by Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Irvin has been out of work at the NFL Network and ESPN since this happened. Defamation, the best defense is the truth. So it's a situation where he may not want a long game of actually taking this to trial. Also in court filings, the hotel took umbrage with this statement. Irvin equates the allegations to something racially charged. This just blows my mind that in 2023, we still dragging and hanging brothers by a tree. Countersuits, settlements are all possible next. But before that, the attorneys for Irvin tell WFAA the video will be made available. The question is, which party will that video favor? In DFW, I'm Joe Punnicker. And that's the truth. Um, because now this is an article from the USA Today, okay, um, that was put out just a couple hours ago. And I'm going to read to you what this basically states, okay? 
So, Michael Irvin maintains his innocence, says Marriott Hotel employees' allegations sicken me. On February 4th, and this is a new tad bit of something that we did not know. The day before the encounter, the NFL League asked the hotel to make aware of any incidences involving guests that were staying in their block of rooms. And so this is where you see there's a partnership between the NFL and Marriott. Of course, Marriott is a sponsor. The NFL uses the Marriotts for all their big events, for all their big wigs and things. On the night in question, Marriott says Irving flagged down the accuser and appeared to be visibly intoxicated and began his aggressive behavior towards the employee, shaking her hand, stating she was attractive, and asking her if she watched football. Irvin also reached out and touched the victim's arm during the conversation without her consent, causing her to step back. Becoming visibly uncomfortable, Irving then asked the victim whether she knew anything about having a big black man inside of her lawsuit says Irving then attempted to grab her hand and said I'm sorry if I brought up bad memories for her the victim pulled her hand away and tried to get and tried to back away from Irving and as he continued to move towards her two hotel employees noticed that their co-worker was uncomfortable when she returned to work and the accuser went to work the next day and reported the incident to her manager who told her to take the complaint to loss prevention according to the lawsuit the accuser is identified as a victim in recent filing in jane doe and previous motions then interviewed by nfl investigators and Irvin left the hotel later that night so the nfl investigators this is where we were hearing something totally different that the nfl had investigators come to the hotel and talk with the um, the victim, the alleged victim. The woman has yet to file any police complaint with the Phoenix authorities. The court orders uh, in the same court filing, Marriott asked the court to issue a protective order to protect the privacy and safety of the individuals. Um, the individuals can be uh, ascertained in the video, fearing the video may go public and limit the publicity in the case before it goes to trial. Irving and his lawyers did receive the unredacted copy of the video conversation on Friday. The court previously ordered Marriott a couple times. And that's the end of the USA Today piece, which is interesting. See, here's the thing that we we can agree on that Michael Irvin shook her hands. Like, you know, we've heard that, that Michael Irvin shook her hands twice. So that's actually in their case as well. Uh, Michael Irvin did say he touched her on the arm he leaned you know lead lead forward and you know they said um i think they said that michael irvin he said i you know laughed and leaned forward could be if he was a little bit intoxicated that he leaned forward conceivably and kind of lost his balance a little bit and touched her arm to kind of you know right his ship but i don't know and again this is where we say there's multiple facets to every story and this one has another one and it's taken another turn so, here's where I want to go through with Dallas Morning News, which, of course, um, may be a little bit different than, say, USA Today. Um, let me make sure I get the right one. Okay, so this is the Dallas Morning News. According to the document, two Marriott co-workers noticed the woman appeared uncomfortable. I'm just going to skip that part because that's exactly what Verbatim was saying. As they approached um, her and Irving, Irving made the comment that security noticed him and offered a parting handshake. See, here, we, here we go. Let me say it again. According to the document, two Marriott co-workers noticed the woman appeared uncomfortable. As they approached her and Irving, Irving made a comment that security noticed him and offered a parting handshake. Security noticed him and said, I'll see you later. Seeing that the other hotels were in the area and wanting the interaction to end, the victim returned Irving's handshake. Marriott said in the filing, Irving then stated that he would come back to find her sometime that week when she was working. Hmm? So we didn't get this in the USA Today article. Irving's uh, attorney, Levi, uh, disputes the details from Marriott. Total hogwash, McLaren uh, said in a statement to the news. Marriott recently created the account goes against the eyewitnesses and Michael Irving's own testimony, as well as common sense. We will release the video next week. There is no sexual assault. 
The fact that Marriott is taking that position is an insult to all true female victims out there. So there's you're getting bits and pieces here where you're kind of having to put it all together. Um, and, of course, Marriott is going to put themselves in the best light that they can in this. Where this all goes, I don't know. If Michael Irvin did something wrong, if he did sexually assault her, um, then, of course, he should be in hot water for it. If he did not, he should be able to win this case and get his job back. The things that are interesting here is that the NFL did investigation. So I would imagine that's the reason why Levi wants to know the names of the people that were talked to as far as this goes um, and what their conclusion was from this as far as the NFL investigators. So this thing is far from over, and we'll see what we'll see. And what we're trying to do is I'm trying to put all of the information all the information that we're getting here together where we can try and come up with a conclusion, hopefully getting all aspects of the information. This is the first information that we have gotten from Marriott. Marriott has been very closed lipped and not reporting anything and so on. For all we know, maybe Marriott has something else that is more damaging and maybe the NFL said we want to keep this quiet. Thus far, we've been going by the witnesses accounts of the two people, three people who saw the interaction uh, from there. And we've been waiting for this tape. I look forward to seeing this thing get resolved. I'm Mark Holmes and I appreciate you. Peace. Oh, and shout out to JD for sharing that video clip with me. Uh, 730 this morning. Peace.